Hi, this is Rob Wilcox. Just wanted to give you a quick demo uh, in the Vault Admin console of how to create a few different partitions for Vault Store and then how to configure partition rollover. So in this particular Vault Store, I've got my ordinary first partition here. If I right click here and start the uh, new partition wizard, we'll walk through this here and um, we can give them unique names like this. What the, the important bit here is to um, set the partition type to be ready, which is the default for any new partition anyway. Click on Next, and I'm just going to create this uh, on my local Enterprise Vault server. So we'll go Next for that, Next for the location, leave the default there again. Uh, I'm not going to run the connectivity test, uh, you'll, so you'll get a pop-up there asking if you want to proceed. Um, I'm not going to configure rollover straight away on this one and I'm going to carry on to the rest of the wizard. not going to use collection software and then finish. That's the end of the wizard and now I've got two partitions set up here. I've got my normal open and active one here and I've got another one listed as ready. What I can then do is quickly set up another one and I'll just go straight through this wizard reasonably quickly. Again, accept all the defaults Now I've got two partitions. What I can do now is, um, let me just bring these down a bit. If I right click on the Vault Store itself and go to Properties, on this Partition Rollover tab, I can change the order in which the rollover will happen. So if I want Partition 5 to be rolled over to before Partition 4, I move it to the top of the list and click on Apply and click on OK. And you can see there it's it's changed the order of them. So that might be useful to you depending on you know where your partitions are going to reside. If one of them's on one drive, one of them's on another drive, and so on. Change the order uh, just like that. What we then want to do is configure um, what happens on this first partition. For example, when we go to the rollover tab there, we can specify how to do rollover, um, volume, time, or time and volume. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that do it based on time and then what they do is once a month they roll over to a new partition and so you would just click OK to that. So what would happen is that would go from partition 1 to partition 5 after a month. Now there's a particular process that uh, Enterprise Vault has that's monitoring this. By default it's, it's been watched every 60 seconds and I've got a D-Trace running here with a filter on it for um, this particular part is is in my filter C partition watch uh, C watch partition for rollover and what you'll see here is that every minute so we've got there and there and there there we go once a minute, the partitions are checked to see whether rollover is needed or not. So what we've got here then now is we've got our open vault store here, vault store partition, sorry, and then we've got two ready vault stores. Now remember, we configured rollover on this first vault store to take place after a month. That doesn't automatically mean that all the other ones are going to roll over after a month either. We have to come in and configure each of those the same, or however we want it. If we want the next one to be for three months, we can do that as well. You can see here that this column shows that rollover is enabled. What you can also do is you can launch the Enterprise Vault Management Shell and issue uh, a commandlet called Start Partition Rollover. Give it the name of your Vault Server and the name of your Vault Store and it will roll over the partition straight away. If I just refresh the back here, you can see the first partition that was active is now listed as closed, and the next vault store is marked as open. So let's just do that one more time. Go to the fifth partition, refresh the back again, and there we can see we're now on the last partition.
One of the other things to look at uh, when the rollover is happening is there is an event logged in the event log. And we can see this one here, for example. This was the partition rollover that I just did. It says partition rollover has occurred. It closed partition number four. It uh, changed partition number five to open. And it says here the triggering mechanism was forced because I ran the PowerShell commandlet to uh, force the rollover. So hopefully that's a little bit of an introduction to um, partition rollover. Um, one of the things that you should be aware of is the one based on um, volume. If we look at the rollover here, volume is a tricky one in that it's, um, it's not volume based on um, how much data has been used. So you can't say, for example, I want to roll over this partition when it has reached 300 gig or 500 gig. You can't do that. You can only do it based on the percentage free space on the drive that it's on or the physical amount of free space on the drive that it's on. So here you can see it's uh, saying it will roll over when there are 5% free disk space left. Or I can say roll over when there's um, 25 gig disk space free. So that, that's one that trips people up from time to time is that the uh, rollover based on volume seems to imply that it's like on the size of the data that's there, but it's not. It's based on the amount of free space that's there. So hopefully that little introduction to uh, partition rollover will, will help you a little bit with your storage management. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.